Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to Anime King. And today I'm going to be giving you part 11 of what if Naruto was taken along with Sasuke by Itachi. Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual. Share this to all of your friends in social media platform guys. And also, go ahead and check out the new episode of what if Naruto awakened the yellow renegon after his exile. Enjoy that guys and I also posted part 2 of what if Naruto was given abilities by 4 devils on this channel as I'm going to be posting on this channel now one guys link will be in the description for part 1 so go ahead and check it out guys over there and remember if you're new to go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the anime king family and thank you for all of your help and your support and yeah without further ado what do you say we begin this new episode start the intro So, the last spot we left off, as Naruto, Sasuke and others made their way, as they were currently in front of Osamu and Kisame. It was then that the battle started, as they started the clash, as the group separated. Half of them take on Kisame and half of them take on Osamu. But, Osamu stood absolutely no chance, as Itachi and Naruto took him on, as he was just, well, 30% of his real power after all, as they quickly decimated him. The other group then came back after dealing with Kisame. So with that, they reunited as they made their way. As Naruto and his team went off as they pulled the papers, but they came up with some resistance, seeing that they had to fight a copy of their self, while Sasuke and the others went inside. And the real battle started as Gaara was dead. As they clashed violently inside with Sakura Chiyo, taking on Sasuke and the others went off as Kiba Kakashi made their way after later. Sasuke Puppet didn't stand a chance with Sasuke, with the Sharingan activated and Sasuke facing off against Shio and Sakura at the same time, as they were able to completely demolish his puppet and knock him down. But something was revealed that shocked all of them. The reason why Sasuke was a missing name was because of what he did, as he did something to prevent a war between Konoha and the San, ending up killing the Kazakage. That is why he's in the possession of the man and his Iron San, as Sasuke. Didn't want for it to go this far, but he had to. To stop a war between them. As things was cooling down in the third great Shinobu war. And then, the Kazakage wanted to push. And make things worse. As Lady Chiyo spoke to him about this. So, instead he decided to help them. There might be a way. So with that they head off. As Naruto caught up with Deidara. Naruto snapped when he saw that Deidara. Was carrying Gaara who was dead. As Naruto started to beat the living crap out of Deidara, his entire face was swollen and bleeding. As the rest of the team came there and he stopped. As Chiyo came there as well. As Naruto spoke to Deidara, as Sasuke was there as well, as he bound Deidara to bring back to the village. After all, they could get information. Chiyo ended up risking her life in the Jutsu to give Gaara back his life. So with that, Gaara was brought back to life. And they head back to the San as they had a memorial bearing for Chiyo. They head back to Leaf as Snadley was surprised at this outcome. As Saucer had a spy, Kakashi and his team were going to take this, as they should get ready to leave, seeing that they have a few days to get there, as Kakashi had brought Saucer towards Yamato, so he can help him with a few public parts, as Navi didn't really fully trust him, but as she had them keep an eye on him, as Naruto and the others would get some rest off from their mission, as Deidara was sent to the IT department, as he was cursing the entire way, why did Saucer get to go free? After all, Sasha didn't kill the Daimyo's, well, family. So yeah guys, so basically that's what left off. You guys can switch across the place and check it for yourself. So, what do you say begin this new episode? The group arrive on the bridge the night before their meeting, as they make sure they set up things, so they wouldn't be seen from the bridge, as they slept in shifts, in case Kabuto arrive early. The next day, Sasha hopped in Hiroko and walked to the bridge, as he waited there for Kabuto arrival. Team Kakashi hid themselves out of sight. 
as it was rather windy so they could get close to fear protection. At noon, a man in a hooded cloak appeared. Upon seeing Sasori remove his cloak, as it was Kabuto. Were you followed? Sasori asked. No, I made sure I left undetected. Do you remember who I am? Yes. Sasori, a member of the Akaskia, said Kabuto. Good, you remember. Were you able to recover the ring? No, not yet. He hasn't given me access to the most secret part of his lab, said Kabuto. Do you at least know the location of all these bases? asked Sasori. Yes, I have them listed down in these files, said Kabuto. You've done well. There's been a change. Oh, and what change might that be? Sasori said a voice. As Sasori head turned to the side to see, Orochimaru, you trained your spy well. I had a rather tough time tracking him, Orochimaru said, fully revealing himself. Damn it. This isn't good. This isn't what we planned for, said Kakashi to himself. Well, save me the trouble, Sasori thought to himself. Kabuto jumped over to Sasori's side as Orochimaru approached too. I should have known from how you were acting for the past couple of days that you're one of his sleeper agents. I know full well about that jutsu that he used, Sasori. Very hard to detect. I would have never known if it wasn't. For some slight changes in his actions. Oh well, I guess we can't be perfect now, can we? Orochimaru said. It seems we may have to fight him. Kabuto, step back. I'll take care of this. Once I take care of him, we will go over the information you gathered, said Sasori. Yes, Sasori, said Kabuto. As Kabuto then slashed right through the puppet, destroying it. As Sasori jumped back and landed on his feet. Well, I guess I'm not fully surprised by this, said Sasori. As he called the third Kazakage. Hmm. Well, you know me after all. But it doesn't matter. I've already set up other arrangements. What? Said Sasori as looked around. Oh, I'm afraid it's too late for you. Die, Urchimar said as he went through hand sign. Suddenly, an explosion erupted in Sasori's chest as his puppet butt dropped to the ground, lifeless, with blood dripping from his mouth. I've always wanted to see a puppet bleed. Goodbye, old partner, said Urchimaru. Lightning blade! Kabuto jumped in the way though as he threw a kunai as Kakashi blocked it with his lightning blade. Seems Sasori brought some guests with him as Kakashi disappeared in a poof. Out of that poof, Sasuke made his way through as he ran his hand straight through Orochimaru with his hand covered in lightning. Sasuke, Orochimaru said, still smiling despite his hand was right through him. I thought you'd be happy to see me, Sasuke said. Who says I'm not, Orochimaru said. As he melted away in mud, looking for me, as he was currently standing on a tree branch. My offer still stands, if you wish to join me. Well, I was looking for you, but not for power. I'm looking to kill you. I can't let you two have all the fun. Kabuto says he rushed towards Sasuke but Kakashi jumped right in his path. I was wondering when you would come off the woodwork, said Kabuto. I never been one to stand by and watch. You should have left after we killed Sasori. You should be thanking us for taking care of him for you. They're after Nurtokan are they not? That's one less. We can handle ourselves against them without your help. As the both of them exchange Kunai's blow. You know, after we caught words of your plans of taking the Akaski. We were considering to leave Konoha alone. All we're really interested in is Sasuke. There will be plenty of time for us to get our revenge on the village. After we've taken care of the Akaski for us though, Kabuto said. As Kakashi kept his eyes focused. Oh, don't worry, said Kabuto as he looked over at Sasori. That explosive that was planned. It was something said, well, can't reveal all the secrets. As the both of them clashed once again, Kabuto ducked a strike from Kakashi. It seems Urchimaru was right. I am at your level. Oh, you think you're at my level? Then perhaps I should stop playing with you, said Kakashi, as he lifted his headband, revealing his Sharingan. About time. I was wondering how long you want to hold back against me. As Kakashi flipped through hand sign and brought his hand up to his mouth, as he fired off a fireball, making Kabuto jump away. The moment he landed, Kakashi appeared in front of him and slammed a fist into his gut. As he did a sweeping kick, forcing Kabuto to fall down to the ground. As Kakashi threw a kunai down, but Kabuto flipped one out of his pouch and threw it upwards, blocking the kunai that was aimed towards his throat. As Kabuto pulled another kunai and aimed towards Kakashi's leg, but Kakashi grabbed his arm. Not bad, but you have to do better than that to get me, said Kabuto. Get Suga! He and Akamaru plow into Kabuto, slamming him mercilessly into the ground. Well, they just keep on coming out like roaches. Did you brought any other friends with you? said Urchimaru, as he ducked a blow from Sasuke. Maybe, maybe not. 
I'm not sure homie decided to follow me, said Sasuke. Hmm. <laughs> Sasuke. I knew you were there the entire time. I'm curious though. Did Sasuke know that you were there? If you have to ask, I guess I won't tell. Then I guess we'll never know, Orchamar said. As he swiped at Sasuke. Easy. You wouldn't want to damage your merchandise, now would you? I can always reattach your arm. It is those eyes of yours I treasure the most. Hidden shadow snakes. As snakes burst from his sleeve towards Sasuke. A single swing as all their heads were sliced off with ease. As Sasuke fired a fireball towards him, Orchimar leaped away as Sasuke burst off with speed and sliced off one of his arms. As Sasuke followed with a spinning kick, but Orchimar leaped away. As he landed, not bad Sasuke Khan, but not good enough. As his mouth opened as he regurgitated himself out of it. You really are a disgusting monster, said Sasuke. Meanwhile, you're really starting to bother me, said Kabuto as he found himself dodging Kiba's attacks. Too bad for you, Kiba said. As he dodged an attack from Akamaru, he spin and kicked Kiba away. As Akamaru leaped forward, as Kabuto twists under the attack and drive his chakra scalpel forward, but Kiba jumped in the path. As he felt Kabuto cut into the muscle in his left shoulder. As Kabuto jumped back, damn, this bastard fell like Ayuka. Akamaru, let's do this, said Kiba. Akamaru leaped up. As he marked Kabuto, is dog pissing what you call going all out? Asked Kabuto. You haven't seen anything yet, said Kiba. As he went through Hansai, there was a massive poof. As a giant two headed wolf looked down at Kabuto. Huh. So maybe size does matter, said Kabuto. Get Suga, Kiba said. The wolf started spin wildly. As Kabuto expected things just scratching the ground, but his surprise thing turned. But he turned with it as it grazed him. As Kiba and Akamara fell out of the air as he managed to strike them. As his tracker scalpels were a deadly thing. As he started to walk forward. As he had a nasty gash on his side. As he was going to finish them off. He was stopped though when a blade cut him. So you became a medic nin, huh? I hope you're as good as making antidotes. As you are using your other jutsus. Sorcerer said. Kabuto turned as he looked at Sorcery before he fell down from the pain of the poison. How? Y you're dead. Uruchimaru Sama planted that explosive note in your heart cylinder while he was helping you convert your body. Well, Ahayuga found it and another Nin helped remove it. Seeing that Uruchimaru is the only one they were new when the process was going on, we figured that it was him. So we set up a thick explosive. You teamed up with Konoha, said Kabuto. Surprise, my loyal spy. As Kabuto passed out. Did you kill him? asked Kashi. As Sakura went to treat Kiba and Akamar injuries. No, he's not dead. The poison is not lethal. But he will make sure that he doesn't attack us on the way back to Kanoha. Just in case. As Sasuke looked around. Where's Sasuke? Him and Urchimaru are taking off into the woods. As strong as he is, he's going to have trouble facing Urchimaru on his own. We better back him up, said Sasuke. Sakura, as soon as he's done with Kiba, recoup with us. Sasuke may be injured, as Kakashi sensei she said. Meanwhile, you entertain me to no end, Orchimaru said. I'm glad I could amuse you, Sasuke said. This will only end one way, Sasuke Khan, so you might as well just give up now. I will have what I seek. Electricity started to run through Sasuke's blade as he clashed with Orchimaru. As Sasuke spin and stabbed his blade in the earth, as he went through hand sign, electric sin bonds. As sin bonds were fired in all directions, forcing Orchimaru to twist and bend his body in crazy ways that no normal human should ever be able to do. I will greatly enjoy ingrating your abilities into myself, Urchimar said. I can't keep fighting like this. It's too close to the time, Urchimar thought to himself. As he already regurgitated twice, no. I thought you were one of the Sonnies. Don't tell me you become weak over time. Cocky, aren't we? Urchimar said. Don't worry, I have many more tricks up my sleeve. As he started to spew out fire towards Sasuke, but Sasuke leaped away. As Urchimar was gone, Urchimar break out of the earth right in front of him, but Sasuke ducked under the swipe, showing incredible speed and reflex. As his blade spin rapidly and sliced into Urchimar's neck, as Sasuke turned and went through Hansen and breathed out a massive flame as he burned the head. As he turned to see Urchimar's body, sprouted a snake, and Urchimar crawled out of it like a hydra cut off one, and more taking place, said Sasuke. This time Urchimaru was panting. Seems this is the end, said Sasuke. Not quite. 
I will have your body. I was going to wait a little longer, but I'll take you now. As Urchimar shot forward, as his body started to change, as his mouth opened wide to reveal another face. As he transformed into his true form, his body was made up of little white snakes and a giant head that looked grotesque. As he was coming directly towards Sasuke, and now Sasuke can, I shall be taking your body. As Sasuke looked without any fear, as his eyes started to change. Goodbye, Orochimaru. Amaterasu! Orochimaru cried out in pain as he fell down to the ground, as his body started to burn. Sasuke was panting a bit as he's been just spewing out juices from jutsus and now using his Amaterasu. It's over, said Sasuke. Oh, is it? Sasuke found himself in a genjutsu. No, it wasn't a genjutsu. It was some strange form of psyche as he was bound with chains. When this is complete, I will have your body. Don't look at it as dying. Look at it. I'd been a part of something greater. You're quite stubborn in staying in this world, are you? Let me send you to the afterlife much quicker. Soul shatter, said Sasuke, as his monkey shirt gun was blazing. As Urchimaru found himself in the ground bone, Sasuke stand over him. What, what is this? This is my world. It is here I will remove you from existence, Sasuke said. As his chakra flare and a strange substance started to crawl upon Urchimaru. He cried as his body started to be eaten away. No, no, he said as he couldn't stop it. As his very essence were being teared away. As there was nothing could do but scream no. Sasuke stood there and waited till every last nook off. Him was gone. As his body then finally gave out as he started to fall. But he was caught by soccer in the real world. Sasuke kun, are you alright? I'm fine. As Kakashi landed, what happened? He's gone, Sasuke said. I took care of him. As Kakashi eyes smiled, seems Sasuke has reached a point where he's stronger than me. Well, with him out of the way, we can find the rest of the bases, given that we now have Kabuto. Well, everything's over now. We should head back to Konoha. I'll carry Sasuke, said Sakura. There's a surprise, said Kiba. Shut up, idiot, she shouted. As Sasuke recovered the next day to walk by himself, as they made their way, dropping Kabuto off at the TNI department. As they went to the tower, I trust your mission went well, Sasuke, said Deidara. How did you get out? Asked Sasori. The Tichukagi was found guilty of attempting to incite war with Kumo. They even found evidence that his daughter was involved at one point. Apparently, Deidara did a favor for the Hidden Stone. He is still regarded as a missing name, but we're free to do with him as we please, said Snaddy. He would be that lucky, muttered Sasori. I heard that you captured Kabuto. I take it this means your mission is a success, said Snaddy. We were fortunate, or Chamar had set us up. He planned to use his meat as a chance to kill Sasori. Did he appear? Asked Nadi. Yes, said Kakashi. I see. He will most likely move his base again, knowing that we have Kabuto. That won't be happening, said Sasuke. As Nadi turned towards him. And why not? Because I killed him. I don't have any proof, because I destroyed his body. But he will no longer be a threat to this village. You, you kill Orochimaru? Snadi said in shock. Yes, he did succeed, said Kakashi. He was weakened. It appears that he get weak when it's time for him to change bodies. He made himself vulnerable by trying to take my body. I see. Impressive work. Once we get information on his bases, we will infiltrate them to see what we can learn. As he was a former member of the Cascade, he may have some information we can use as our advantage. This was an A rank mission, but since you brought in Urchimaru, I will credit your team as an S rank success. If that is all, then everyone except for Saucer and Deidara are dismissed. The members of Team Kakashi left as the two remain behind. Since you are exonerated from your crimes of Akasuke, you are free to do as you will. It is your choice if you wish to stay on with us or return to your village, said Snaddy. I am still a missing in. Return to the Hidden Stone wouldn't do well for me. I'll return here, Deidara said. I plan on return to the sand, but for now, I will aid you against the other members of the Akasuke, said Sorcery. I see. I have already sent warning to Kumo to look out for Hidon and Kakazu. According to Deidara, those are the two after Jinjuki there, correct, said Snaddy. Yes, I take it later I told you what we know of their abilities. They are difficult to kill, Hidon. He is immortal, while Kakasu has five hearts, right? said Snaddy. Right. We don't know much more about them though. We don't have more information to offer you, 
on Osamu or Kisame. We can only tell you that Zetsu acts as our spy and is in charge of body disposal. What about this Toby? Do you know anything special about him? Toby is not a full member, or at least he wasn't before. There's a good chance he will take the place of either Dator or myself. As far as I know, our leader didn't have any potential other members. I do not know how he fights. Said Sorcery. All we know is that he has shown Master of our Space Time Ninjutsu already, said Snaddy. I didn't know that much. As for our leader and his partner, we know nothing of them. I believe that he created a statue we used to extract the juice, but that is all we know about him. His partner never speaks. We don't even know if it's male or female. We also have no knowledge of where he's based, said Sorcery. I'm not surprised. I would expect your leader to be the cautious type, not wanting to bring attention to himself. Seeing that he's an enemy of all the Shinobi Nation, said Snaddy. Time skip several days pass as Snaddy had put Sorcery and Deidara on probation as they were uh, off brand Jonin at the moment. Seeing that Sorcery was working with the ex Son Shinobis, Kim Mar and the others to hunt down and destroy and find out what he can about Urchmar bases once they got information from Kabuto. Within the several days, Kabuto tried to resist torture as he didn't believe that someone like Sasuke could kill his lord. As Kabuto found out that he has his limits though, when Ibiki started to get rather dark as he eventually gave out information and after that he was placed in prison as Kimaru and the team had went off to find out about the bases and what they will find inside. The inner sound was dismantled when the news of Urchumar's death had been spread as the bases were all ransacked as he had no one to lead them now as all of them this well went off their own ways. Some of them trying to control the bases and that led to a full out war. So with team Kimimar went their own, they end up searching the base as they found Jugo. Seeing that Kimimar was there, they were able to convince Jugo to come back with them and they went to the other base where they found Karin as they also took Karin with them as well. And to the other base they found Sigetsu as they freed the prisoners. So with that all over they made their way back to Konoha. I see you brought some friends, said Snaddy. Former prisoners, they will be helpful in our incoming fight against the Akaski, said Kimaru. Very well, I trust your judgment. In the past years, you haven't given me a reason not to say it's Navi. Well, what did you find in your raids? There was very little we could find about the Akaski there. There's one thing I can show you though. This said Sorcerer as he pulled out Urchmar ring. What's so special about a ring, asked Navi. These are necessary for Jutsu, the leader used in the Bijou extractions. There are 10 rings in all. One for each finger. The requirement make it so they can only be most 10 members of the Akaski. They can't be replaced. This ring is one of the reasons Akaski was hunting Earth tomorrow so much. As for what we can do with it, we have two options. We can hold on to the ring, there's a chance Akaski. We'll find out that we have it and come here to take it. Or other options to get rid of it. To put in a place that it can never be found. The less members there are to perform the jutsu, the longer it takes. But this time we can do. If they need a rescue. If all members have these rings, then we are the ones that you and Dator wore. We had disposed of our rings. They most likely have found them, said Sorcery. Since we don't know the full ability of their members, it would be best for us to get rid of it, said Snaddy. Very well, Sorcery said. Now you three. What of you? Do you wish to become Shinobis of Kanoha? All three of them nodded. Very well. I will have you three all tested to see where you can go in the ninja ranks at the moment. As she looked through some files, I don't have the resource to give you a place to live at the moment, she said. I have to be with Kimaru. He's the only one that can keep my abilities in check, said Jugo. I can stay with Tiawaya, said Karin. I can get out along well with the spider, said Sigetsu. If that's all, then you're dismissed, said Snaddy. As Sigetsu and the others made their way, as Sigetsu run to someone he knew. Zabuza? You're here too? Sigetsu? Didn't think I'd ever see you again, said Zabuza. That's right, you're apprentice at seven. No wonder you know. Zabuza said Kidamaru. It seems that this place is getting more entertained by the minute, said Sigetsu, as Tewa led Karen to her apartment. Hey, Pineapple, you hear? Troublesome woman. I was sleeping so well, said Shikamaru. What was that? She shouted. I'm glad to see her back. Who's that? This is Karen. She's gonna be staying with us for a while. I don't mind. She needs to pull out. Oh, I knew you'd understand, said Tewa, as she gave my beautiful smile. To think this was the same full moon Kunoichi I fought three years ago. She have her tender moments, but damn, I must whip as dad. Wait, you have a boyfriend? He's not that good looking. Must have an interesting personality, said Karen. 
Well, he kicked my ass. He kicked my ass. And then he gave me the respect I always wanted. This lazy bum beat you? Asked Karen. Are you that surprised? Asked Kamaru. Of course. You look like she could snap you in two and you beat her. Yeah, yeah, troublesome redhead. Hey, what did I tell you about the T-word? Said Tewaya. The same thing I told you about swearing, said Shikamaru. I hate it when you do that, said Tewaya. Oh, so you hate me now? I never said that. Shut up, she said. Are you two living together? Said Karen. Actually, most will say that we make a good couple. You just have to read underneath the underneath to really see it. Don't feel bad, my sensei took a while to understand as well, said Shikamaru. Just take his word for it if you try to argue with him. You won't win. Okay then, said Karen. Meanwhile, Zetsu was about to deliver some interesting news to Pain. Leader Sama, a team of Konoha Shinobe, has killed Urchamaru. We believe they have his ring as well, said Zetsu. Do they? Well, at least, they got rid of Urchamaru for us, said Pain. Should we make an attempt to recover the ring? Asked Zetsu. No, leave it be for now. We won't be needing them for too much longer, said Pain. Very well. I will be continuing looking for the other Jinjoke, said Zetsu. Have you informed Hidon and Kakuto about their targets or about? Said Pain. Yes, they're on their way to intercept the Nibi Jinjuki right now. I still haven't found out where the Haksabi Jinjuki has hidden himself, said Zetsu. I see. Keep looking into it, said Pain. There's one more thing I found the Senbai. But it has no Jinjuki, said Zetsu. The Senbai is Toby Target in form of location, said Pain. Yes, Leader Sama. And with that, Zetsu disappeared. It's only a matter of time before we secure all the Jinjuki, said Pain. And then we can begin the plan, said Conan. This world will understand. True pain, he said. Time skip. Hey kid, I've been named Daxu. What do you think of me? What do you mean, said Naruto? I mean, do you think of me as a friend? Or a best friend? I'm pretty sure you don't think of me as your lover. You get what I mean, right? Well, I think of you as a close friend. But, <clears throat> how would I sum it up? Something closer than that. You mean like family? Well, yeah, said Naruto. Seeing that I didn't have a mother. You're kind of like my mother. Who took care of me when I was younger. What about Sasuke's mother? Does she treat you well, she asked. Yeah, but you've always been there for me. After all, you're always here, said Naruto. And I really appreciate you too for it. Oh, thanks. If I may ask, said Naruto, what brought this on? Hmm. I guess I'm just wondering how you feel. That doesn't sound like you. What's the real reason, said Naruto? Well, I'm thinking about the future. I'm not saying that you're weak or anything. But there are still too many unknowns when it comes to the Akasuke. You shouldn't worry, said Naruto. The two of us together are a mighty force. The more we train, the stronger we get. We'll be able to handle them. I will never let anything happen to you, said Naruto. Jeez, kid. Making a demon feel this way, she said. Hmm. Maybe you're having a girl moment, said Naruto. Shut up, she said. Yeah, I love you too, said Naruto. For the remaining day, Naruto met up with Deidara, who apologized for what happened. As Naruto had no hard feelings about it, he thought that he should be the one to apologize and Deidara wouldn't want to be around him. But Deidara told him past was a past. After all, he would do the same if their situation was reversed. As Naruto went and have some ramen with him, as they separated, he met up with Hinata and Hayashi as they were going back to the clan compound. As Naruto went with them, as Hanami was there, as they were training her. As Sasuke made his way home, Mom, brother, I'm home, he said. We're in here, Sasuke, said Mikoto. As Mikoto was teaching Itachi some cooking tips. As Sasuke came in the kitchen, he was shocked. Itachi was cooking without burning it. Huh, never thought I'd see the day where Itachi got cook without filling the house with smoke, said Sasuke. Shut it, said Itachi. As Mikoto giggled, keep stirring it for a couple of minutes, then reduce the heat to low. Right, Itachi said, as he looked focused. So, what happened, Yachi said? Well, the mission went well. I was able to kill Urchamaru. Itachi turned as he was surprised. As he cursed, my hand! As he touched the pot by accident. Itachi, what's your language? As she smacked him with a spoon across his head. Sorry, mom. So, you really beat him? My little big brother, said Itachi. You know, I'm not a little kid anymore, said Sasuke. As Mikoto went up and hugged him. No, you're not. But it doesn't matter what you say, you're still my little big boy, she said. Mom, cut it out, he said. Meanwhile, at the border, at Kamino Kune, what did Zetsu say? That she was spotted further north. Correct. Zetsu said that she was up here, near the abandoned buildings. Said, Kakatsu. Abandoned, how unfortunate. 
suggestion that I prefer. But there were people there to get caught in the crossfire, said Hidan. Yeah, that's a real big shame, said Kakazu. Don't insult Justin something like that, as Hidan heard the sarcasm in his voice. You of the Akasuke. As the both of them turned. Is that her? No. She couldn't be this stupid, said Kakazu. I won't be hiding from any of you. I'll make sure I kill you where you stand, said Yujito. Huh. The bitch is stupid, said Hidan. As Yujito fired a blast of lightning. As the both of them were leaked away. It's a shame, Hidan said, that I can't sacrifice her to Jashin. As Yujito slammed into him the lightning bolt. As she jumped back and started to run. I thought she said she wasn't hiding anymore, said Hidan. It doesn't matter, we need to capture her, said Kakazu. As the two went after her, Kakazu keeping an eye out for any traps that she thinks she was sneaking off the set. What, she's running scared? Do you really think she have any time to lay out any traps? Don't worry, she will be the Akasuke. Capture her soon, said Hidan. Despite what she just pulled, I don't think she's that stupid. I think she is trying to lure us into a trap. It doesn't matter. I'll let you know when I'm worried about such a thing, said Hidan. Much to Kakazu's surprise, they did not run into any traps. So, she really was stupid, as they were led into a sewer system. Hey, you! What happened to not running into Hidan? They finally came to a stop. I thought you were going to face us. I intend to. I just want to make sure you were in a place and you couldn't escape, said Yujito. As she went through hand sign, a series of explosives went off, trapping them in a space that they were in. Hidan held down to his necklace as he started to pray. Do you have to pray before every battle? If I'm going to capture my target, I'm going to do it right. After all, I can't kill her. Now, leave me be, said Hidan. As Yujito looked at the two, as she was thinking over ways to defeat the pair. If I'm his target, then does that mean only he will be fighting me, she thought. Forgive me, Jashin Sama, because I'm unable to kill on this mission. As he placed a necklace back in his clothing, as he looked towards her. Now, you stupid woman. Thinking that you would be the one leading us into a trap, said Hidan. The fight really didn't last too long. What the hell's taking you so long, said Kakazu, as Hidan was currently lying down in a circle, with a pike sticking right through him. Screw you. The ritual is important. No. Stop bothering me, Hidan said, as Yujito was pinned to a wall with a knife through her hands. As Zetsu appeared in front of the pair, looking at the rubble that took place after Yujito entered Tailby's form. Seems she gave you two some trouble. Nah. She's just a wily one, said Hidan. As he picked himself up, the ritual over. I see. I'm here to take the Jinjuki off your hand, said Zetsu. Well, that would be better. We have business elsewhere. Carrying the body around would just slow us down, said Kakasu. Do what you need to, but don't occupy yourself with anything that will take more than a few days. Toby's on his way to capture the Sandby. As soon as he finishes, we will begin the process of sealing them. Very well, this next task will not take too long, said Kakasu. Good, keep your ears open and prepare to gather and lead your some nuts. And with that, Zetsu took Yujito as he went away with her. Where is this basin of ours? asked Hidan. The Fire Temple, said Kakazu. A few days later, Snelly was in her office with the monk that managed to escape as he was currently telling Sorcery and Daedra the information, the description of the two men that attacked the temple. Yeah, that's them alright, said Sorcery, Hidan and Kakazu. Do you know why they will be coming here? Could they be after Naruto? asked Nadi. Hearing that they were in the Fire Temple, and they were heading towards the Fire Nation. It's possible. I know they became frustrated after losing track of their Jinjulke, said Sorcery. Very well, I will assemble teams to track down and confront the two. I want the two of you on one of those teams, said Snaddy. The both of them nodded. Sizune, get me a list of all Jonin, Takabisa Jonin, and hide Jonin in the village. We don't have time to wait, said Snaddy. Shizune nodded as she got to work. Meanwhile, Toby was looking for the sand by the coast. If I would have known it was going to be here, I would have asked Payne to make Hidan go after it. He came from around these parts. He wouldn't mind seeing his homeland once again, said Toby. As he continued his search on the coast, he stumbled upon a man playing his flute. As he had long blue hair, his ears appeared to be scaled. It looked like he had three scaly tails. The man didn't seem to notice Toby and he kept on playing his song. Excuse me, said Toby. But the man ignored him. Excuse me, Toby said. The man ignored him. Hey, Toby shouted. What do you want? The man asked. Toby wants to know if you've seen a giant turtle demon around here, said Toby. Toby, is that what they're calling yourself these days? The man asked. What do you mean? Toby's Toby. Drop the act, Madara. I know it's you. Your chakras stand out too much for your own good, said the man. Oh, 
Kane, Kawasaki, or should I say Sanbai? How have you been, said Madara? Well, I can't really complain, but I know you didn't come all this way to talk about old times, said Kawasaki. Do you know why I'm here, said Madara? To capture me, right? I know all about that organization of yours, Akatsuki. I didn't think you would come out here yourself, said Kawasaki. That wasn't my original plan. The one in charge of capturing you defected to Konoha. Is that so? What a shame. How was the Kayubi, by the way? Sealed in some brat. But you probably knew that already. Just as I know that you were responsible for causing the events of letting her get sealed. To think we trusted you. I knew from the start that you had nothing but evil intentions. If only, Kyubi could have seen it. Even if you had tried to kill me, nothing would have changed. Well, I suppose Konoha would have, have two brats with two demons. How many of us have you sealed so far? Let's see, the Ichibai, the Gobe, the Rokibai, the Shichibai. So, four. And we already captured Nibe, so I guess you could say five. Six, once I'm done with you. You really think you're gonna get me so easily? I suppose if it was 15 years ago, I might have a problem. But I heard something. You became weak. Am I wrong? Your information gathering skills are rather good. I give you that much. But even in my current state, I'm still more than a match for you though. Well, while I wouldn't mind finding out, there's one more detail I want to know about. Why? That ridiculous mask. If you're gonna fight me, remove it. Sorry, but I can't do that. There's some things I don't want even you to know about. Fair enough. So shall we get this started? Sure, said Toby. Kawasaki started to play a tune on his flute. As sound waves were directed towards Madara. As Madara found himself in a Genjutsu remnants. As Kawasaki appeared through a blade that has scales on it, like Samihata. As he prepared to remove Madara's head. But flames explode from Madara's palm. I guess it wouldn't be that easy now, would it, said Kawasaki. You should know that your Genjutsu tricks won't work on me, said Madara. Can't blame me for trying, said Kawasaki, as he pulled a blade and rushed towards Madara. But his attacks went right through Madara like nothing. The standby stopped as he pulled out the dagger and threw it towards Madara. And as he expected, it went right through Madara like he wasn't even there. Space Lime Ninjutsu, huh, said Kawasaki. You catch on faster than those who fought me previously, said Madara. I know one thing you can't beat, said Kawasaki. As he charged forward once again, trying to land a blow on Madara. As he just kept on passing through him. But then, much to Madara's surprise, Kawasaki cut through part of his cloak. What? How did you do that? As much as I would like to brag and tell you. If I told you that, it would put me at disadvantage. So no. As he chuckled in his mind, such three tricks were work against my shadow dragon sword. As Madara narrowed his eyes at Kawasaki was using another weapon. Hmm. So the blade. As he pulled out the kunai. As he started clash with the man. As he got sliced on his arm. Had he moved a second slower, he wouldn't have a hand anymore. As Madara started to realize the trick behind Kawasaki's sword. It wasn't two swords that he had, it was just one. But at first he was using... I see. An optical illusion. How crafty. You must be getting old. That took you a longer time than I figured out to find out what I was doing. Madara went through hand sign. Fire style. Fire palm technique, he said. A stream of fire erupted from the palm of his hand. Kawasaki started to gather, chakra into his throat as he spew out a geyser of water. As the thing smashed into Madara flame as smoke filled the era. As Kawasaki looked around, before the ground suddenly broke and fire exploded from it, he was able to twist his body just in time but his shoulder got burned badly. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. You're always using those fire jutsus. Your clan is full of masters of them after all. I'm glad you understand. No. Surrender. You will save us a lot of trouble, said Madara. Give up? Now? I guess I should stop playing around. Demon art. Demonic ascension. As Kawasaki started to grow and grow and grow and grow until he became large. As Madara was now face to face with the sandman in his true form, towering over him. It's time you pay for your past mistakes. Water release. Surfing turtle, said the sandby. A form of sandby made from pure water rushed towards Madara at incredible speed. The thing then went up in the air, spinning, as its entire body spin and turned, and came down at Madara like a bullet, and exploded as the ground cracked under the force. When everything cleared away, all that was remaining was an orange mass. As the sandby released a sigh of relief, as he couldn't feel them anymore. Hidden nature, demonic art. And with that he reduced in form, to not get people suspicious, as Kawasaki reappeared. As he walked over and picked the mask up, 
I guess I'll hold on to this as a souvenir. Maybe I'll show it to Kayubi the next time I see her. Show her what? As Kawasaki looked up to see Madara. His face was exposed to the world. After so many years, his face showed signs of his age. But he should be much older. His right eye had a sharing on his left eye. Was a solid black. Looked like it had rotted away. What? How? said Kawasaki. Your technique wasn't strong enough. Fire release. Volcano Jutsu. The ground rumbled as molten lots exploded from the ground. As he slammed into Kawasaki, who didn't have time. As his body was sent sailing. As they raised up and smashed down hard. As he cried out in pain. When Madara stopped the technique, all of Kawasaki's body was burned. And his armor had melted away. How? Kawasaki said. You should be thankful I reduced that jutsu. After all, I need you alive. D Damn you, said Kawasaki as he passed out. And another one falls, said Madara as he picked up his mask and attached it. Guess I'll have to take this scenic route for once. At least until my chakra returns. Meanwhile, Hidan and Kakuzu was making their way to the nearest mountain station. This place is disgusting, Hidan said. If you find it to be so appalling, wait the hell outside, said Kakuzu. Fine, don't take too long. The leader can summon us any time now, said Hidan. As Hidan made his way and sat down, waiting, what a disgusting place. It reeks of money and other filth, said Hidan. As he looked to see a group of people approaching, oh, what I would give for a good slaughter right now. Asuma, is that it? Achikamaru. Yeah, stay on guard. Asuma, his squad consisting of Shikamaru, Tewaya, and Rado, slowed on their approach. Looking for signs of the Akasuke Pier, as they didn't notice Hidan was out on his own. Partner, nowhere in sight. They're usually paired up in teams, right? Said Tewaya. Yes, the other one must be inside. We can use this to our advantage. The best way to handle this is have three of us keep him occupied. While the fort attacked the next one as soon as he left the building. I agree with you, Shikamaru. Keep eye on the building. As soon as the other members step foot outside, trap him. We'll take care of this one. We should focus on stalling them for the time being. I'll send a signal to the other teams. Once they're here, we'll follow through the plan, said Asuma. As the entire group nodded. Let's go. So with that, they break apart. God damn it, this is getting so boring, Gidon shouted. As he pulled out his sight. They really think I don't see them. I guess I'll be the first one to start it, he said as he threw his sight forward. But they separated. As he pulled back on it, Asuma spin and blot the sight. With his trench knife. Not bad, he does as he pulled his sight back. Now, well, let's see which one of you can get first. Which one of you first want to meet Jashin Sama? To be a sacrifice for his holy. He done found himself unable to move as he heard a melody. As the world around him started to change. His opponents disappear and he found himself floating in mid-air. Then falling, he was plummeting to the earth. Which consisted of sharp, twisted metals. As he screamed and cursed as he hit the ground. As he got pierced all over. Now, said Asuma, as Radio slashed Hidan into the chest of Katana. It seems that they weren't well informed. As Hidan looked at him, you piece of crap, I'll get you for that. Kakazu stepped out of the building as he was instantly caught inside of Shikamaru's shadow. Hey Kakazu, stay out of this one, these guys are mine. Fine, but if you let your guard down, I won't be helping you. Well, you don't have a choice in the matter while they're trapped. Why my jutsu, said Shikamaru. Brat, I could care less about your jutsu, said Kakazu. As he turned and not paying Shikamaru any attention, but Shikamaru still held on to his jutsu. Something was really wrong here. As they need the other group to get here, and as fast as possible. But guys, be in this episode right here. If you want to next part, if it's earners to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. Oh yeah, and go ahead and check out the part 2 of what if Naruto was given. Abilities by four devils. Link will be in the description for part one that will be over on Anime King 2, guys. So go ahead and watch it if you haven't watched it yet and enjoy. And over on Anime King 3, I'll be leaving a link at the top of the description. I post a brand new episode of What If Naruto Awakening the Yellow Renegon after his exile. So go ahead and check out that, guys, and enjoy. And remember, if you're new and this is the first time hearing my voice and you enjoy the videos, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the Anime King family. Thank you for helping your support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be your plan talking back to all of you. So yeah, for tonight I'm out. See you guys tomorrow. Peace.